Here I have a pack of cards, and I like to make it so whenever you hit the stack, it spawns in one of these cards. To do so I'll be using object pool, which is kind of like instantiating an object into a scene, however unlike actually spawning in an object, this allows you to retain syncing, which is very useful. So let's get started. First of all my cards are nothing special, with each of them just being a coloured plane, with a box collider on them, a pickup script, and an object sync on them. With that out of the way, the first thing we need to do is set up our pool, so I'm going to come to my cards, I'm going to go add component object pool. I currently only have three cards, so I'm going to make the size three. And now I need to say what objects are inside the pool. Now apparently I've heard that you can drag and drop multiple objects into here, but I personally haven't been successful at that, so if you do know how to do that, please let me know in the comments below. For now however, I'm just going to drag and drop my cards individually into each slot. And now we have our pool set up. Something interesting to know about a pool, is that when you hit play, you'll notice that all the cards are despawned when the game starts. The way an object pool is set up is that these are potential objects for you to spawn into your game, and thus they have to be spawned in for you to be able to interact with them. So if we were to stop playing, the next thing I want to do is make it so that when you hit the stack of cards, it spawns in a card. To do so I'm going to go add component udon behavior, and now we need a script to go inside this udon behavior component. I'm just going to come into my project window and right click create via chat udon udon graph program asset, and I'm going to call this card script. Then I'm going to reselect our card stack and drag and drop the script into the udon behavior component. And now it's time to write our script, so I'm going to hit open udon graph. Now that I'm in the graph, the first thing I want to make it do is make it so that when you click the stack of cards, it spawns in a card from the object pool. So in order to do that, the script first needs to know what game object to spawn in. So I'm going to come over to my variables tab and go plus vhat object pool, and I'm just going to call it my pool. Then hit the drop down and make it public so we're able to select it inside the inspector. Now we need to spawn it in. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into my graph and put it into a VRChat object pool, try to spawn node. So now whenever this node is called, it will try and spawn an object from our pool. And if there's objects left that haven't been spawned in yet, it will spawn the next one in the list. However, for a pack of cards, I'd much prefer if the next card was random instead of being the next one in the list. So before I try and spawn it in, I'm going to shuffle my pool. So I'm going to create a VRChat object pool shuffle node and put that in front of the try to spawn node. So now whenever this is called, it will shuffle all the remaining objects, and then try and spawn one if there's any left. However, where will the object spawn? Now, we could define it with a VRChat object pool set start positions. However, this takes a vector free array instead of a vector free, and I want to keep this tutorial simple. The easier way of doing this is just to change its position and rotation when the object spawns in. So to do that, we're going to put this game object into a game object get transform node, as it's the transform that defines where it is. And then we want to put this transform into a transform set position and rotation. Now we just need to know where we want them to spawn into. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another variable, which is going to be a transform. And I'm going to call this object spawn point. And I'm going to hit a drop down and make it public so we can select it inside the inspector. And in just a bit, we're going to create an empty game object and tell the cards to spawn at that location. So we need to know where this transform is. So I'm going to chuck it into the scene. I'm going to put it through a transform get position node and a transform get rotation node and plug that into the set position and rotation node. However, there's a sneaking problem with the script. If the object pool fails to spawn in an object because there weren't any left, it will still try and run this node, but as there's no game object, it will give out the error object not set to the instance of an object. So we need to confirm whether or not there's actually a game object that's been spawned. So we can simply create an is valid node, chuck our game object into that. And only if it is truly valid, should it play this next node. Awesome! So now when this is called, it will shuffle the array, try to spawn in the object, check whether or not there was an object that spawned, and then set that object's position to be the same as our object spawn point variable. So now we just need to say when we want these nodes to be called. So I'm going to create an event interact node, and plug that into the shuffle node. Sweet! So that's all we need to do for the coding for now, so I'm going to hit compile just to make sure it didn't mess up. Come back into my scene view. On my stack of cards, we've now got two variables. The first one is the object pool, so I'm just going to drag and drop my cards game object that contains the object pool into the object pool slot. And now we need to create an object that's going to define its spawn point. So I'm just going to right click, create empty, make it a child of card stack, and then I'm just going to reset its values and then move it up. And this will now be the spawn point for our cards. So I'm going to come back to the stack and drag and drop our game object into the object spawn point. And I'm just going to rename it to card spawn point. Awesome, so now it's time to test this. I'm going to play test this with Sign Emu, which allows me to play it inside the inspector. And now that we're in the world, we can close this menu and click on our card stack, and it should spawn in a random card. And I can keep clicking on it, 
and we spawn in all three cards, and if we were to click it again, it won't spawn anymore, and we're not seeing any errors inside the console. Awesome! Okay, so we now know how to spawn in a card, but what if we want to return a card back to the stack? Or, in a more technical term, return it to the pool. Well, to do that, I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to move it to the side, shrink it down a little bit, and I'm going to call this card returner. I then want to come down to its box collider and set is trigger to equal true, and I want to create a new Udon behavior script. I want to come back into my project window, and I want to right click, create VRChat Udon Udon Graph Program Asset, and I'm going to call this card returner. I'm then going to reselect my cube and drag and drop the script into the Udon behavior component. Now we just want to open up the Udon Graph, and now that we're in the graph, this script will be a little bit easier than the previous one. So, in order to return an object to an object pool, you want to use the node VRChat object pool return. And this node requires two things. First, it needs to know the object pool that you want it to return to. So I'm going to come up to my variables tab and create an object pool variable. I'm going to call it my pool again. And then we're going to hit the drop down and make it public so we can see it inside the inspector. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into the instance slot. Next, we just need to say what object we want it to return. So in our case, we want it so whenever the card goes inside the cube, for it to respawn the object. So I'm going to create the event on trigger enter. And this event will tell us the collider of the game object that entered inside the trigger. So we can just put this collider value into a collider get game object, and we can plug that into a VRC object pool return node. I'm just going to plug the arrow in as well. And now this is all we need for the script. Now, depending on how your scene is set up, there is a pretty high chance for this on trigger enter to be played, and the object that entered the trigger wasn't one of the cards. However, like the try to spawn node, this return node should really be called try to return. If it can't find the game object inside the pool, it just does nothing. Awesome. So if we hit compile and come back into our scene view, with our cube selected, we want to give it the object pool of cards. And now it's time to playtest this. So now that I'm in the world, if I hit the stack of cards to spawn in a card, I can drop it onto this cube and it respawns the object. And if I was to grab this key from another tutorial that I'm planning and was to drop that in, we can see that it just falls through and we don't see any errors inside the console. Awesome. However, there is something else that we need to fix. If I was to spawn in a card, and instead of dropping the card in, if I was to fall into it, we can see that the card respawns, which is what we expect. However, we are now unable to interact with anything. If we go into the console, we can see that when I click the button, it's using pick up, use down, and pick up, use up, as if we're still holding the object. VRChat hasn't registered that we're no longer holding an object, as the object's now been returned to the pool, but it seems to be none the wiser. So before we respawn the card, we need to tell the pickup script to drop the item. So if I was to stop playtesting and come back into the Udon graph, there's a small bit of code that we need to add. So I'm going to create a pickup script drop node, and we need to play this node before we return the object. So we need to say what pickup script we want it to return. We want to grab the game object from the collider and put that game object into a game object get component node. We want to change this get component node to be type. And then we want to get type vrc.type pickup and plug that into the type node. So this game object get component node will grab our collider's game object and try and get the component vrc pickup type from it. Now, whenever you use a get component node like this and you're not entirely sure that it had a pickup on it, we always want to put it through an is valid. And only if it's true do we want to play the drop node. So if I was just to rearrange all this and plug the component into the drop node, and so now with this slightly spaghetti code, when an object enters the trigger, we will grab its game object, we will try and grab a pickup script from that game object, and if there is a pickup script on that game object, we will tell it to drop the game object, and return the object to the pool. Awesome, so now if we had to compile and go back to the scene and playtest this, we should see the code work as normal, as if we drop the game object on, it respawns, and if we were to pick up the card and put it into the cube, we can click on the stack of cards again, and it'll pick up a new card. Awesome! Okay, so we now know how to spawn in cards and return cards to the object pool. However, there is an issue in this code. Currently, with the way object pools work, only the owner of the object can spawn in and return cards. In our case, there's a bit of a problem, because currently only the instance owner can spawn in and return cards. So how do we change our code so that anyone can spawn in a card? Well, I'm going to start with the card stack, so selecting that and open up the script. The simple fix that we want to do is that we want to make ourselves the owner of the object pool when we click on the object. So before we shuffle the cards, we want to put this interact event into a networking set owner node. And then we need to make ourselves the owner of the object. So I'm just going to use a networking get local player node and plug that into the player slot. 
And then we need the object pool. So I'm going to grab my object pool. I'm going to put it through a object pool get game object node and plug that into the object slot. So now whenever we interact with a stack of cards, it will make us the owner of the object pool. So we'll then be able to spawn in a new card. However, even though we're the owner of the object pool, that doesn't mean we're the owner of the objects inside of it. So in order for the card spawning not to look laggy, I'm going to copy this bit of code and make it so we're also the owner of the object that we just spawned in. Now I'm just going to copy this bit of code, jump over to my card returner script and paste it in. Now it created a new variable, so I'm just going to hit this drop down and change it to the my pool variable and delete this extra one. And now we just wanted to play the set owner node before the trigger plays. So I'm going to drag my arrows into that slot and then just rearrange this to make it look nicer. And if that, this code should now see when a trigger enters, it'll make ourselves the owner of the object pool. It'll check to see whether or not we have a pickup, drop it if we do, and then return the object to the object pool. Awesome. So now with all that done, if we were to play and test this with two instances so we can test out the networking. Of course, VRChat anti-cheat's gone a bit of a pain recently. So you want to build and test. And once you've got one of them going, with this developer show extra options on build page and account page, we then want to go and build and test last build. And now that we're in the world, we should see that one player can pick up a card, move it, and drop it into the discard box. And the other player should be able to also click the button and spawn in their own card, which just so happened to be the same one this time. And once we stop getting yellow ones, we should see that this works totally natural on both ends. And one player can spawn in a card, and the other player can pick it up and also drop it. And once again, you can put the card inside the box, and it's not going to cause any problems. Well, except for it retains its velocity which may or may not want to be desired. But once again, I'm trying to keep this simple. If you're interested in getting that to work, you'd want to grab the game object, put it for a game object, get component, change it to type. Then you want to get type rigid body, plug it into here, grab the game object. And then we want to do a rigid body set velocity. And we just want to set it to zero, 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 as it is by default. But it basically works without this, just with a little bit of weirdness. Okay, so now all this is working and networked as well. The last thing I want to do is create a button to respawn all the cards so they return to the stack. To do so, we need to create our button. So I'm just going to go right click, pretty object cube. I'm going to make mine 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, which is about the size I like for a button. And as I don't want players to collide with it, I'm just going to select is trigger and make that true. Then we need to create a script for it. So I'm going to create an Udom behavior component, come into the project window, create another script, and I'm going to call this reset all cards. Then I'm going to select on my cube, which I'm just going to rename to respawn all cards button and then drag and drop our script into the Udon behavior component and open it up. Now that we're in the graph, we once again need to grab our pool. So I want to create a VR chat object pool, I'm going to call it my pool again and hit the drop down and make it public so we can select it inside the inspector. Now on interact, AKA when we click the button, we want it to respawn all the objects. So the first thing we need to do is make ourselves the owner of the object pool. So I'm actually just going to come to my other script and copy that over again, delete the extra variable. And now what we need to do is find all the objects that are inside this pool and cycle through them, returning all of them back to the pool. So I'm going to put it into an object pool, get pool node, and this will give me a game object array of all the objects that are inside the pool. So I'm going to cycle through this array. So I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to grab the length of this array by using a game object array, get length node. And then we need to cycle through the array, returning all of them to the object pool. So I'm going to create a VR chat object pool return node. I'm going to plug the body into this as we want to run this node once for every object. I want to check my my pool into the instance slot. And then we just need to grab the target game object. So I'm going to create a game object array get node, plug the int index into the int slot and the game object array into the instance slot and plug that into the return node. So in summary, when we interact with the event, It'll make us the owner of the object pool. It will then see all the objects inside the object pool and cycle through them, returning all of them to the object pool and thus essentially despawning them from the world. If we were to compile, come back into our scene view, click on our button, give it the object pool, which is under cards. And then we were to play test. Now that we're in the world, we can spawn in cards and when we hit the button, it should return them all to the object pool. Awesome. So hopefully you found this helpful. Feel free to leave a like on the video you liked it, leave a comment down below if you have questions, and feel free to check out some of my other tutorials that I have on the channel. But until next time, bye!